Hello and welcome to the Circular Metabolism podcast. This podcast is hosted by the Chair of Circular Economy and Urban Metabolism held by Aristide Tanasiadis and Stefan Kampermann at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. In this podcast, we talk with researchers, policymakers and different practitioners to unravel the complex aspects of what makes urban metabolism and economies more circular. On episode number 15 of the Circular Metabolism podcast, I exchange points of view with Oriana Romano, coordinator of the Cities and Circular Economy program of the OECD. In this program, Oriana and her colleagues explore what is a circular city and what are the challenges for implementing the circular economy in cities. Indeed, while a number of technological solutions exist already, Legislative and economic barriers are perhaps the most challenging ones to overcome in order to get closer towards circular cities. For Oriana, perhaps one of the most promising additions of circular economy in traditional environmental regulation is its systemic approach. However, due to the added complexity, it is extremely important to have extended dialogues with relevant stakeholders at different levels, as well as encompassing the local, uh, the local context. In this quest towards circular cities, dialogues and exchanges between cities, sharing similar struggles and similar stages of progression in order to understand how different circular economy principles land in different contexts are also vital. However, these differences beg the question whether there should be a unique way to adopt circular economy and how do you compare circularity between cities if everything is so different? Oriana says that while it is not ideal to benchmark cities at this stage, it is essential to understand what are the important pieces of information that we need to monitor in order to take better decisions. In other words, what do we need to measure and why? Enjoy this episode and don't forget to visit our website www.circularmetabolism.com for the rest of our productions. Please help us improve our podcast by subscribing to your favorite app, including YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher, and leave us a comment with your thoughts. Thank you, Ariana, for uh, taking the time and uh, to meet here in, uh, in Paris in your ECD. It was great having a discussion uh, beforehand about what you guys are doing here in Circular Economy, but could you perhaps present yourself and what OECD is doing in, in this field of uh, Circular Economy? Sure. First, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, yes, so I work in a center for entrepreneurship, SMEs, regions and cities, and in particular in a division on urban policies and sustainable development, where we are working at the role of cities and regions yeah. in a circular economy. We have a program called the Economics and Governance of Circular Economy in Cities and Regions, and we are working with uh, four cities mm -hmm. in order to understand uh, what is circular economy today, what are the obstacles to mm -hmm. implement circular economy, and the future opportunities. And what's uh, sparked the interest of uh, boiling down circular economy in cities and how did you choose these four cities? Could you yeah. help us understand? Well, so basically the, the thing is that um, cities play, play an important role nowadays in uh, economics and social and environmental terms. Um, already most of the population lives in cities and will be living in the future, 60% of population by 2050. Yeah. Cities are consumers of uh, goods and uh, also producers of up to 80% of uh, greenhouse gases emission, not to count uh, waste production, energy production. So um, at the same time, cities have uh, a role to play in terms of uh, sustainability the economic system of mm. the country, so mm -hmm. they provide jobs, they provide services, and they also have a role to play in terms of uh, public investment in lots of sectors that are involved in uh, uh, circular economy related activities. So for all this reason, we <laughs> it's kind of the nodes of yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> we thought that it was important to look at the role of cities and regions in circular economy. So what they can do, what are they 
they doing and how the OECD, being an intergovernmental organization of 36 member countries, can actually help mm -hmm. uh, cities and regions to move forward their own agenda and to understand what are the conditions for the city to actually uh, move uh, from the transition from linear uh, to circular economy. Have you thought of these conditions already or are you kind of um, investigating as well with the cities what are these economic, uh, legislative, um, you know, financing uh, preconditions for a circular economy? Do you already have some uh, insights about this? Uh, well, it's <laughs> it's the, a tough the, question. Yeah, of the, course. Uh, the very basic. I mean, uh, every time we work with cities, yeah. we start by oh, almost given for granted that technological aspect and technical aspect. Um, and dimensions ex and solutions exist for cities and regions to really move uh, towards the transition from linear to circular. What you were mentioning in terms of economic and governance mm -hmm. conditions are really the difficult, uh, <laughs> the difficult part to make sure that these technical choices and solution can actually uh, last and can actually be put in practice. So it is a matter of uh, what are the new business model needed uh, for uh, um, uh, private the private sector to move uh, towards um, a circular economy it is about uh, what are the uh, collaboration between the private the public sector the university and what is the role of citizens mm -hmm. it's about uh, stakeholder engagement which means uh, how the government at different levels can be local, can be regional, is actually engaging the different stakeholders that can play a role towards this transition. Mm -hmm. So it is not about only the government itself, but it is um, it is more on in terms of a sharing responsibilities on who can do what and how. And for doing this, of course, you need proper regulation that can actually allow, for example, um, the use uh, of waste or what is actually a resource is not we don't talk about the waste any longer mm -hmm. Um, in the future, so in terms of production of new materials or production of new resources, uh, it is about um, fundings and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for example also data and information. What is difficult is really to understand what is a circular economy, what are the opportunities <laughs> Especially for, in cities, right? for yeah. circular, uh, circular economy to happen in cities and yeah. regions and it's amazing to see that there is a lot of interest of building this knowledge mm -hmm. really in a shared manner. The governments are working with the private sector, with citizens, with research centers, institution and uh, university to have a better understanding and also to make sure that all these opportunities mm. are really taken into account. Do you think that, because we discussed a bit uh, before as well, that what is the real difference between circular economy and just plain environmental regulation, right? Why is this so different? Yeah, the, 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 it's it's very tough question. Yeah. Yeah, um, because they they actually go hand in hand, mm -hmm. but the very di the difference I think it's in the in the system mm. in a, in, yeah. a, in the in the way policies are conceived and stakeholders are engaged and. Um, and how to make sure that there is a coordination, we say, across people, policies and places. So basically, uh, people is, uh, is needed to, to coordinate uh, like the, the three, tri so triple yeah. and quadruple helix. And in terms of policies, it's not only about water, it's not only about waste, it's not only about spatial planning, but it is about all that in a city. Mm -hmm. And then in places, it's about not just the city itself as a, a sort of an autonomous and independent entity, but it is also about the connection with the surrounding areas, mm -hmm. with the regions, and there are and with the study that you also are carrying out, you know, this, uh, um, that the metabolism is not 
inside the city only, but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, a more like a functional area of uh, exchanging you know, of input and output of resources, material and energy. So the difference is in the way uh, cities and regions can conceive uh, policies mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, how they can actually influence uh, sus um, uh, sustainable production and consumption patterns, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean only looking at the end of pipe of yeah. the process. So it's not only about recycling and reusing, but it's conceiving policies in a way that can change actually behavior and production and delivering of services in a circular way. So looking at how resources are used and how to make sure that resources can keep their value, their value at the highest uh, during the whole cycle. And um, so, as you said, I think that the most, uh, the word that kind of strikes me every time is this systemic or systematic approach that we need to, to, to take into account for circularity more than just uh, separate environmental regulations. How do you tackle or uh, approach this complex task with the cities, right? I mean, you have yeah. four case studies right now. I imagine you do not start with a systemic word because it's a bit too difficult to digest. How do you approach cities into yeah. this? Uh so we are working with, uh, as you mentioned, four cities. Yeah. One is Groningen in the Netherlands, Umeo in Sweden, mm -hmm. and Valladolid and Granada in Spain. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, these are very different cities. Yeah. Uh, uh, they have uh, different geographical and economic and social and environmental characteristics. Yeah. So what we do uh, is to um, is to is to carry out what we call the policy dialogues which means that uh, we go and we are, we go to the city and we talk with several stakeholders so we have different groups what are so kind of example, the stakeholders that you're well they can be from the government so mm -hmm. the local the regional and also the national one yeah. and then several categories the private sector for example uh, different industry industrial sectors or we talk with farmers uh, the agriculture sectors, yeah. we talk to NGOs, we talk to universities, we talk to research centers mm -hmm. and all these uh, actors that play a role in the city and actually can have a, a role in the future of a circular economy strategy. So we start talking, th this dialogue, this multi-stakeholder dialogue can really help to understand what is the current situation and what are the opportunities for the future. And importantly, we're not alone like um, there is an OECD delegation, but we also go with peer reviewers from other cities. So we have a really a peer peer-to-peer -peer approach, mm -hmm. meaning that there is a city, a representative from a city of the same level of maturity mm -hmm. regarding circular economy um, approach that are, for example, starting to be interested mm -hmm. in developing a circular economy strategy. So like an so inspiration or something like that? In a, in, a, in a more an equal way, in the sense that they, they can share experience and they can share especially concerns yeah. and um, difficulties that they are facing. But mm -hmm. then we have also peer reviewer from a more a mature, uh, mm -hmm. having a, um, ad advanced experience in terms of uh, circular economy. And namely, we are accompanied by, for example, the city of uh, Amsterdam mm -hmm. and the city of Paris mm -hmm. that have started this journey like uh, uh, three, years four ago, years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. And they can really also be an inspiration for uh, newcomers. Uh, to understand um, how does it work and what 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 are the success factors but also the failures and mm. also what the city can expect in uh, in, can uh, imagine, in yeah. starting yeah. this uh, this journey which is very challenging and um, but so it's important to see the great motivation that these cities have to work towards this transition to work with us to work with other cities to learn and um, to try to build something that would bring value to their city and mm. it can be uh, social it can be economic but it can be also environmental one but you mentioned it I think before and I think 
what we are all struggling is that per perhaps there could be a definition of circular economy in cities and that's already a difficult task. But uh, I think what's most important is that there's a different declination and translation of circular economy in different cities. And I think, you know, maybe Paris has a different angle of circular economy than Amsterdam and Umea. And so I think that it's, it's very relevant to kind of see how the circular economy lands into mm -hmm. cities, you know, and how does it translate. Um, do, do you think that, you know, at the end of the day, different challenges still contribute to circular economy or there's kind of a unique approach that we should have across cities? So f no, first, uh, I, 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 th I don't think there is a unique approach. There mm. is no one size fits all solution. This is, uh, I think, for sure. What the cities have in common is definitely um, um, need or a necessity to think about their, the use of the resources that they, they're making. Mm. It can be related to the land, it can be related to uh, water, it can be related to waste and energy and so how to make sure that all these uh, sectors uh, and then reflected into the policies mm -hmm. are connected in order to produce and consume uh, in uh, a more sustainable and let's say circular way so most of the time it can be that for example cities are um, starting this journey because they have natural resources constraints mm. so uh, it is needed for them to understand how they can save natural resources but this is not the only uh, not entry the only reason it yeah. can be an en yeah it can be an entry point but there are different reasons and for example in the cities we are working uh, with there is a, a sort of a very clear um, distinction at least in terms of the main objectives uh, via the lead is really they see really circular economy as an opportunity to create more jobs mm -hmm. to create new business to create uh, to uh, to promote innovation for example and so they have already started up um, they have a roadmap on circular economy and they have started a program to fund project uh, started this program started in 2017 so far they have uh, more than 60 projects uh, that they, they had as a um, criteria to uh, be localized in Valladolid and to create jobs yeah, so it's yeah, really yeah. about creating jobs in uh, Groningen it's about uh, thinking of a new economic system that could bring economic value to the city mm -hmm. and also uh, create opportunities for collaboration with university and startup given that Groningen is a university city and yeah. is very well known for the research center for example on energies and mm -hmm. energy transition that they have then you look at uh, Umea and Umea it's about environment so be neutral carbon neutral in the future how they can change uh, the way people consume services are provided and at the same time reaching a circular approach in all the activities to for which the the city is in charge of and then in, Gra in uh, granada in spain mm -hmm. The, uh, I think uh, we saw that the, the main reason was to build uh, knowledge uh, okay. and innovation yeah. and, uh, because of the fact that uh, Granada was nominated in 2017 a city of science. Okay. So it is important also to, to make sure what the university and also the, the new companies, entrepreneurs and business, mm -hmm. how they can work uh, with the cities and actually how the city uh, vice versa can collaborate uh, with uh, the, the other actors in shared responsibilities for uh, circular economy to happen. So different motivation but basically common uh, uh, vision I would mm. say in terms of uh, let's change something uh, for the city and let's make sure that collaboration, coordination and the systemic view can uh, create an advantage to, to the city for the people living in the city. Mm. So it's more of a structural approach than a, let's say, very specific. And I think this ties in with the question of monitoring, right? Because how do you compare the 
the circularity of Umea with the one of Groningen if they don't have the same objectives at the very end is and for me I think uh, you know because I'm a very flow guy and uh, I like monitoring everything in quantitative terms but I, as you said it's not necessarily the only way to do it and uh, I think the approach and that cities are taking is also as relevant as the the quantities themselves how so how do you measure finally or how do you say that one city is more circular than another um, or can we say I'm it not, you know? i'm not <laughs> totally convinced that this is what we have necessarily to say mm -hmm. in terms of uh, benchmarking cities on their level of circularity um, but I agree with you that uh, metrics and uh, measurements mm -hmm. are really needed to understand the progress. So, so each city will have a baseline, a starting point mm. that would be different from uh, one city to another. Yeah. Um, and so it is important to have a look at the progress and to have a look at the target. Um, when uh, studying circular economy strategies uh, in place uh, in cities and regions. For example, we have just sent out a global survey to have an understanding of what is going on around the world. Uh, we selected um, a certain number of uh, indicators that can actually help the cities measuring some impacts and yeah. impacts are related to uh, environmental issues like for example in terms of uh, water saving, energy saving or waste diverted to landfill but they are looking also at economic and social aspects for example new business creation or startup that are following circular economy project, a number of um, employees uh, created for these new businesses mm -hmm. related to circular economy. So it is important to monitor, but I think uh, it's difficult to, to benchmark cities. Yeah. What we are uh, doing here within the project on, uh, on the economics and governance of circular economy in cities is to help country uh, is to help cities in different countries to uh, um, self-assess for example the existence and the level of implementation of mm -hmm. some governance conditions or the, their level of circularity uh, through um, a scoreboard mm -hmm. in which you have some key dimensions for example innovation system thinking core level of coordination with other levels of government mm -hmm. or uh, partnership with the actors in the surrounding areas that can help a city understand what are the conditions and what is in place, what is missing and what they can do. Um, so evaluation, monitoring, uh, data information is definitely something that uh, is needed, is uh, something on which uh, we are working and uh, it's indeed a challenging task <laughs> for the Everybody is trying to, to yeah. figure it out but it's... But also for the city to uh, um, understand what are the needed information mm. to take robust decisions and also uh, to uh, monitor the implementation of these decisions. So it is really a work that we are conducting together with policy makers, yeah. together with actors within the city, first to scoping and to understand what needs to be measured and why. I mm. think this is the first. Yeah, the why uh, is a good question. Yeah, this actually, is, yeah. this is the first uh, uh, basic question, which is the hardest probably that we will we are trying to clarify in a uh, shared approach together with the cities that mm -hmm. we are working with, and also together with other cities that would like to be involved in this in this project. Mm. What well, perhaps uh, to to look in the future? How how do you think? How do you see things evolving? What's the the future steps of circular economy in cities and what are the future challenges? I mean, there are already plenty of challenges, but what do you think are the, the next steps in, in, in this process? 
Well, I see that uh, more and more cities are getting interested mm -hmm. in understanding and building knowledge on circular economy, which is uh, very encouraging mm -hmm. and it is uh, also um, something that uh, stimulates cities in uh, having a place not only um, like in their own agenda towards the circular economy, but also with the rest of the world, for mm -hmm. example, in uh, a lot of cities are recognizing that circular economy can be an, a concrete approach to achieve the sustainable development goals, which are very interrelated mm -hmm. uh, across one another, and specifically in respect to uh, the SDGs 12 on sustainable uh, production and consumption yeah. patterns. Cities are also recognizing that they, they have a role to play as a promoter, as a facilitator, or as enablers of circular economy. And they are working with uh, organizations like uh, us, but also with other levels of government mm -hmm. to understand what are the conditions needed and what needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. Cities play, for example, an important role in terms of uh, financing, for example, of for the future of investment and infrastructure. This is very important. Yeah, yeah. But for example, they have little to say in terms of uh, waste-related regulation. I mean, they don't always have, uh, they, they don't always play a role. They cannot really change this, but they can coordinate, they can communicate with uh, the upper levels of government in order for ex starting a discussion and make sure that the needed changes also to in this regard that can actually happen in the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is important to stimulate this dialogue, the understanding and then take a concrete ac action. Most of the time, it's still uh, in an experimental way, it can yeah. be on a small scale, but this is uh, like a baby step or yeah, a normal yeah. step that should be taken in order to make sure that these steps can be actually scaled up and then uh, they move from uh, experiment to uh, reality and uh, um, a very uh, common and normal future of uh, all the cities around the world. Mm. So I guess, as you said, I think the, the governance aspect is really crucial and we tend to forget about it, like the horizontal and, and the vertical simultaneously, I guess, somewhere. And the role of the OECD generally plays a very strong role, I guess, at least at the ver vertical um, multi-level or multi-scale, how do you call it? Uh, <laughs> multi-level governance. governance. Yeah. <laughs> so is that the... Is that the ways that we need to figure out uh, to, to disseminate more and to facilitate more this kind of uh, city to, to city, uh, but also city to, I don't know, um, Europe or city to, you know, uh, bigger G7, uh, uh, I mean, coalitions, and, I mean, bigger coalitions or something like that. Is that the... Yeah, it's a uh, coordination. Cities uh, can, in, in terms of... Uh, cooperation with other cities. I think uh, it's uh, very stimulating for um, un uh, building knowledge, building capacities. Mm. Uh, think about something that uh, has been done in other places and can actually be replicated yeah. or can be of inspiration from other cities. Then the way of how to make this happen it needs coordination across levels of government and also within uh, departmental, uh, uh, within department uh, at municipal or regional level. For example, we saw that uh, there are several mechanisms in place uh, in cities. So one is uh, the innovation agency, for example, in Valladolid, mm -hmm. that is a, a coordination mechanism across the different departments uh, at municipal level in order if we we are saying that a circular economy is systemic, then the economic, the environmental, uh, the mobility and transport uh, department, they have to communicate and they have to make sure yeah. that these policies are uh, connected. And the same happened at um, a vertical level, so from the national, the regional, the local level, in order to understand how to overcome some obstacles that yeah, can be, yeah. for example, related, as we discussed, to regulation, that can be related to information, that can be related to uh, the financing mm. of uh, um, 
of circular related activities and also infrastructure. For example, in the Netherlands, the, um, uh, the national strategy for the implementation of the national strategies mm -hmm. uh, the, on circular economy, there is also a fund uh, to which uh, cities and uh, uh, cities can, can actually uh, apply in order to start with uh, with projects related to circular economy, and uh, this uh, we think it's a it's a, it's a way also to 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 make sure that the implementation is possible. Mm. Thanks a lot, Oriana, for your time. Well, I'm thank you. very much looking forward to the to the next steps and to all of your work. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for listening or watching our podcast episode till the end. If you like this episode, if you have unanswered questions, if you agree or disagree with what was said during this episode, please leave us a comment to spark a debate. Thanks again and see you in the next episode.